we have mobilized about $20 billion of investment in the power sector. And uh, we are, in fact, all set for another five years because projects have been approved and being implemented. I, the mention I made of $20 billion, half of it actually would be from private sector, or maybe more than half. We didn't re only rely on uh, domestic investment and multilateral investment. Because World Bank and ADB, they're slow, and the quantity of investment we needed wouldn't be forthcoming from there. So we went out into the market, but we are not, uh, we don't have any rating, so it's tough to get investors by floating in the uh, capital market. So we asked for the bidders to power projects to mobilize fund on their own. Coming more directly to innovation and creativity, we have established an organization called National Power and Energy Research Council, more in the line of um, uh, the national agency that you have in the U.S. And it is uh, set up to fund res research, both uh, domestic and public sector, private sector, and even foreign uh, investment in research, so that we develop uh, technology solutions which are peculiar and unique to our environment. Maybe we'll, later on when you discuss this uh, uniqueness will come into play. Also, we have set up an organization, these are by law, an organization called Sustainable and Renewable Energy Development Authority. This uh, agency is supposed to promote uh, renewable and sustainable energy strategy, and at the same time, at that level, promote innovation and creativity. We are trying to, you know, by cultivate an, an ambience of creativity in our organizations also. We promote uh, ground level workplace innovation also and reward them. Very recently we had a, an exhibition where we rewarded uh, shop floor uh, innovation. They are very interesting and uh, they are unique to uh, our environment. Like one, we call it uh, uh, we do the Alor Feriwala, the hawker that sells uh, electricity. It's a small tri wheeler on which the rural agency goes from door to door uh, and hawking electricity. Meaning, they, they would, if somebody wants electricity in the rural areas, you go and put up the meter, sign off the documents. Uh, it's an interesting idea of reaching the uh, rural people and more so the marginalized people in a very creative, you know, interesting way. These are more, you know, uh, uh, management innovation, you might say. But there are other innovations that we are also trying to promote. Also, the organization I call SREDA, Sustainable and Renewable Development Authority, <coughs> they have been working on very applied innovations. And I, I believe that uh, Bangladeshis are very creative. If you promote and encourage them, then uh, they would not be lacking in any way. So you made some impressive, impressive strides. Uh, but what do you wish that Bangladesh knew, say, 20, 25 years ago, when you look back on your country's effort uh, in the energy sector, what was the biggest mistake Bangladesh made on power, or was there any? Let me not call mistakes, but one particular uh, aspect of power industry was uh, seen as Achilles' heel. This was the what was the euphemistically called the system loss. You sell X amount of electricity, but you only get paid for much smaller amount because much of the electricity is actually stolen and they don't pay. This was uh, seen by other investors 
particularly multilateral agencies like World Bank, Asian Development Bank, as a, a as an Achilles heel for an industry where you will have to make investment and you have to recoup your investment. So uh, it was also part of a society in transformation. You know, people miss out that what is uh, maybe theft now, five years down the road that wouldn't happen anymore. But the, these agencies stop financing. But you know, uh, it was a blessing in disguise because that was the time when we first went out uh, asking private sector to invest in our industry. And they came forward. Um, as of 2018, Bangladesh had a power generation capacity of 18,000 megawatts, and your goal is to generate 60,000 um, by 2041. But how much of the 60,000 would be renewable energy? It's a uh, Renewable energy, or for that matter, the demand for energy, is basically like an algorithm. You, know. you move forward and you also discover what are the opportunities available for you. You don't hold one for the other, you know. You have to move forward. Now, for example, we the kind of roughly think about 10% uh, is a good target. And in fact, uh, we already have more than 10%. Uh, of solar energy. You know, Bangladesh is the lar has the largest number of solar home system in the world. About 6 million households have solar home system, which if you multiply by 5 each household, so you have about 30 million people getting um, access to electricity through solar home system. Uh, these are basically uh, standalone uh, solar system where you know individual families uh, would put up panels and gadgets to their own needs but it, it has a uh, limit it has plateaued now we are also we have gone around to our neighboring countries also even in myanmar to see that if our grid is connected then that itself provides newer opportunities which would otherwise not be available. Like, you know, if our grid with India is connected, it's not connected yet. You know, we import electricity from India, and then we have a system called HVDC system, by which we put it in our system. But if, we, if our grid gets connected, then we can access, let's say, electricity from Gujarat, for the sake of argument, because the time zone, you know, uh, between two to three hours. So when in Gujarat there is still electricity, Bangladesh already has, the winter evening has come. So we can even use solar energy for, uh, these are kind of time zones are like batteries, storage. And Gujarat will be able to sell also. So these are ways by which we can uh, increase the share of uh, renewable energy we have. Uh, we're also setting up a nuclear power plant in Rukpur. 1200 megawatt to start with, which would be increased to uh, 2400 megawatt. In a recent interview uh, with Bosom Workers Banga Service, Bangladesh's Foreign Minister Mr. Moment said that in his meeting with the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State Mr. Pompeo, uh, the U.S. investment or U.S. Bangladesh partnership in exploration did come up. So, where are we on this? You know, one of the, uh, the largest suppliers of gas in Bangladesh is Chevron, with, uh, which has a large interest in um, assets on the northeastern side of Bangladesh. They have done some exploration, but mostly this was a developed field or under development. Uh, Exxon Mobil came and talked to us, showed, our in showed their interest in both upstream and downstream uh, hydrocarbon industry. And we are hoping that they will also take part in um, we have invited them actually to come and discuss with us um, exploration of deep sea. So is there any other areas 
in the energy sector, whether uh, it could be solar energy or wind, where uh, such U.S. investment or uh, U.S. Bangladesh partnership is possible, besides the uh, offshore exploration. You know, one thing that many U.S. industries are, um, have invested in power sector, and they continue to show interest, mostly along with the private sector. Recently, we signed an MOU with GE and a local partner, Bangladesh, to provide about 2,000 plus megawatt of electricity in what they call gas to power. But uh, only recently, we signed, we completed a contract, uh, I mean, signing the contract uh, with um, Summit Power and GE about 583 megawatt of uh, gas-fired combined cycle power plant. So U.S. interest uh, companies are showing a lot of interest. We also hope in R&D, research and development, uh, there will be some cooperation between U.S. and Bangladesh. Uh, as I said, mentioned um, the Energy and Power Research Council we have reached out to non-resident Bangladeshi scientists in the United States to come and uh, join the platform that we have and um, share their experiences, their suggestions, and maybe undertake research uh, in collaboration even with the U.S. educational institution. So one of your government's priority is to provide a safety net for the poor or the underprivileged citizens. Um, so you have been providing subsidies so to keep the gas affordable for most citizens. But you are also providing subsidies uh, to the commercial sector, say industries. So do you have any plan in near future to gradually withdraw these subsidies or introduce uh, diversified pricing policies for different industries, say providing more subsidies to uh, ready-made garment manufacturing industries uh, to keep them competitive in a free market and not so much for other types of industries? I know by subsidy has been uh, in some sense abused in the literature. You talk of subsidy in a competitive market. The moment you move away from competitive market, then the issue of subsidy becomes very complicated. For example, the electricity that we sell to villages, we don't look at it as a, even if it is a lower than the cost of producing electricity, we don't look at it at, uh, as subsidy more so as investment in human capital. You know, you light a village, the mother can take care of the kids better, the girls can um, uh, read and also help their moms, the, you can take care of the old and the ailing members of the family. Uh, off time you can start doing some work, you know, stitching and other things that, that are done in rural areas. So it's a life-changing the input to rural environment. It will reduce infant mortality, it will reduce maternal mortality. So these things, uh, you can't, if I, at a lower price, if I provide this input, they call it merit good in literature. Uh, it's, it's not a private good uh, in Bangladeshi context now, particularly in rural areas. So if it is a merit good, then the extra, the, the Step that we take the, between the cost and the receipt is we look at it as a social investment. So before I wrap up, uh, what's your vision? Where do you want to see the Bangladesh energy sector, say, in the next 20, 30 years? Well, I want to see every house has access to electricity, every house has access to um, uh, other fuels for cooking purposes and all. Uh, we, ha we, pract we should be practicing uh, to do more with less, which you call energy efficiency. We should lead the way in energy efficiency. We should lead the way in energy conservation. Uh, 
we should lead the way in energy responsibility. So that uh, and obviously in that process minimize the greenhouse gas emission. The energy responsibility is a very interesting thing. You know, people talk about efficiency and pricing and all to deal with efficiency. But um, responsibility is what I said the Prime Minister does. You don't, even if you can afford, don't waste anything. Don't waste energy, even if you can afford. We say that be responsible. You, have, you can tax Mother Earth to a certain extent, not beyond that. So uh, use as much as you need, not as much as you can afford. So I hope our kids, you know, when they grow up, they maintain their uh, social capital, you know, live as communities rather than the individuals. And that means lighting the society. So it's more than allegorical than, you know, physical. Great. Thank you Thank very you. much.